but since relegation, the script has flipped. Cash has consistently left the Swansea.com stadium in the championship, with the Swans spent seven million in the last four years. I'm very, very confused. With championship status secured for another season, let's dig into the financial story of Swansea City. Flashback to 2014 and Swansea were competing in the Premier League and in Europe. However, four years later and after a takeover by an American consortium, Swansea suffered relegation to the championship. The Swans endured playoff heartbreak in consecutive seasons and finished this period in the bottom half of the second tier. On the sidelines, there's been a huge amount of turnover at the Swansea.com stadium. Loudrup, Monk, Curtis, Guedelin, Bradley, Clement, Britton, Carvajal, Potter, Cooper, Martin, Duff, Sheehan, Williams. Now let's shift our focus off the pitch. What's been happening behind the scenes? Revenues peaked in 2018 in the last year of their Premier League run. Since relegation, parachute payments have dwindled. In Swansea's new reality, 2023 delivered 22 million of revenue, over 100 million less than five years ago. Across the championship, Swansea are middle of the pack, still three times smaller than those with full parachute payments. What factors contributed to this downturn? Let's dig into the revenue streams. Media revenues fueled this decline. Swansea picked up under 9 million in 2023, far off the Premier League peaks in their last two top flight seasons. Matchday revenues have also consistently declined. 2023 saw under 4 million generated, well under half brought in in 2014. Average attendances have reduced steadily since relegation, 2023 dropping under 17k for the first time in the decade. Conversely, commercial revenues continue to rebuild, 2023 7 million the Swans' best results since relegation. By league position, there are clear distinctions between the Premier League years, parachute support and the new reality. Championship revenues have averaged 38 million, but that will drop the longer the Swans remain in the second tier. Yeah, very, very annoying. Now let's shift our focus to profits. Swansea were in the black three out of five Premier League seasons, but since relegation, losses have been more common, dropping to over 17 million in 2023. And across the division, Swansea are towards the bottom of the bottom line performance. Yeah, from our perspective, we're disappointed with So why has this bottom line dropped? Let's address this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Wages peaked in 2017 at the height of the Premier League run. Since then, wages have declined for six consecutive seasons. 2023, the lowest of the decade, under 27 million. However, as a proportion of revenues, 2023 staff costs remain over 120%, once again highlighting the strains of life in the Championship. But how did this translate into points on the pitch for Swansea? At their best in the Prem, points cost just under 2 million in staff costs. But as performances waned, these rose closer to 3 million. In the Championship, points have cost under 1 million apiece in wages. But after staff costs alone, the difficulties of Championship life without a parachute are clear. Next, let's delve into operating costs. These ratchet up to 31 million in the Premier League. Following relegation, these reset, with 2023 incurring 12.5 million. Details are sparse as to why, but at the EBITDA level, Swansea's trajectory over the decade is evident. Third, stadium and facilities. Total spend has steadily increased to around 2 million. Of that, Swansea pay 400k in operating leases for the stadium. Lastly, let's discuss transfer fees. Swansea's Premier League spell saw sustained investment in the playing squad. Other than 2017, where the sales of Andre Ayew and Ashley Williams turned a profit. 2018 also saw big player sales of Gilfie Sigurdsson and Fernando Llorente, but following relegation, the club impaired their playing squad by 15 million, effectively writing off previous transfer costs, meaning the year had net transfer spend. Since relegation, the Swans have consistently generated net profits, fueled by the sales of players such as Alfie Mawson, Ollie McBurney and Dan James. So these player sales have helped offset the losses in other areas, 
but the trajectory in the last three years may be a concern. But what about financial fair play? On a three-year rolling basis, PSR losses must not exceed 39 million. Starting with operating profit, we must also include any interest paid or received to give a full financial loss before tax. Clubs are then allowed to exclude certain costs, such as youth development. There are also a number of COVID-related adjustments, such as loss of income. These aren't disclosed, so we are in the realm of estimates. So feel free to robustly challenge these in the comments. As an estimate, we're assuming these to be 6 million a year for allowable costs and all COVID items net to zero. Add these in and Swansea's PSR losses are estimated to be 18 million, well within the max. But what about 2024? Despite 2021's profit no longer in assessment, Swansea could still afford to lose 19.5 million this year. Add in the departures of Joel Perot and Michael Obafemi, and the Swans don't appear to have any issues with the regulators. Yeah, no, obviously it's great when that happens. But does cash paint a similar picture? As always, we're examining the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBIT dial line items, follows a consistent pattern. In the Prem, the Swans brought in cash in all years but one. But since relegation, the script has flipped. Cash has consistently left the Swansea.com stadium in the championship, with the Swans spending 87 million in the last four years. I'm very, very confused. Over the decade, those Premier League windfalls mean total cash spend reduced to 29 million. Now turning our attention back to transfer fees, it's the opposite story. Transfer cash flew out in the Prem as Swansea looked to avoid relegation. However, in the Championship, Swansea have consistently brought in transfer cash. In fact, over the 10 years, Swansea have raked in 17 million. Combining these figures, and we can see cash has gone on a roller coaster. But the ups and downs have resulted in Swansea spending just 12 million across the decade. So how much funding has been required? Cash has been taken in and out of the club over the decade, but since 2021, the prolonged stay in the championship has seen consistent cash injections, bringing the total over the decade to 42 million. The majority of recent cash has been equity, resulting in Swansea City having a net cash surplus at June 2023. Since then, Swansea's owners have continued to inject cash into the club, currently standing at another 20 million. So will this investment power Swansea back up to the top of the championship and beyond? Only time will tell.